glass is tuned in here. I can see a fur off, but I can't see close to it. <laughs> these glasses help a little bit. I want to uh, read a few verses from uh, chapter 15 of the book of 1 Corinthians this morning. And we are singing that song this morning, Jesus is Coming Soon. It talks uh, a little bit about the resurrection and uh, how that uh, we're to look forward to it. I'd like to uh, again express my thanks to each one of remembering me in prayer and I uh, would like to uh, uh, say that my wife is in a powerhouse while I was having this thing done because I had to have all this, uh, these eye drops put in and uh, everything and remind me to take it and to close my eyes and all this stuff so uh, I'm thankful for my wife. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord for her. All right, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. Now the gospel he's talking about is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the gospel, what the Bible refers to the gospel. And he says, but which also you are saved if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Now, as uh, even Brother Larry was talking about this morning, uh, they're about making your election sure, or making your calling an election sure. Uh, evidently, Paul, as he was writing to the uh, church there, uh, uh, thought about some of them that had believed in vain. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it's very simple. It's very simple to be hoodwinked by the devil, and I mean You're right. to be blinded by the devil, and to uh, think that you've got what you need and got what you want, and you can go through a, a pretense of it sometimes and think that everything's good, and listen, as long as you're going through a pretense, the devil ain't gonna give you much uh, problem because mm -hmm. he knows your condition. Right. And uh, so this is why that uh, Paul is, is saying these words here, unless you believed in vain. And we, this morning, uh, uh, sometimes, uh, I get to the point, I say, well, I may be in this uh, this bunch here because, listen, it don't seem like sometimes when I go try to study the Bible, uh, nothing don't gel just right. When I try to get a lesson up, it don't work sometimes. And so uh, I get to think, well, Lord, hey, am I, am I uh, uh, lost? Am I not? But then, you know, the Holy Spirit comes to me. Amen. And I say, no, no. No, it's not that. It's Satan's imps. It's mm -hmm. Satan aggravating you. Satan wanting to deter you from doing what you what you want to do. And so this this morning, when when we are being uh, entertained by the devil, and he's causing us problems, we need to know for sure that that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Because listen, he he will do it. And uh, if if you've been saved, the Holy Spirit will bear witness with your, uh, your, your your salvation and it'll let you know. And so here he says here, but by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Now this morning, this is a, if this is a necessity, to, and I believe that the Bible will back me up. And this is this is a necessity this morning that a person within themselves has got to be the Spirit has got to understand that Jesus Christ came to this world and that He lived here upon this earth and that He kept the law and that He died that you and I could be sin saved. He, he paid the atonement, he paid the death penalty for our salvation. And this is what Paul is talking about here when he says, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, and this Lord Jesus Christ came to this world, he died for our sins, and he arose again to ascend to the Father, Amen and sit on the right hand of the Father and make intercession for us this morning because listen, we have not got there yet. 
we have this body that we have to put up with and it's a sinful body it's one that's on the devil's side and believe it or not and this body desires the things that satan wants to teach us right. because it's sinful but listen we have that soul within us that spirit within us that's been saved through the the shedding of the jesus christ blood and and the calling of the holy spirit to us and calling us to salvation and we have been saved and so this morning it's good for us to understand of the death and the burial and the resurrection of the lord jesus christ and Amen. as we sing this jesus is coming soon listen he's coming soon right. and uh if it's if it's if it's a hundred years from now listen it's going to be soon because i know that people back in the 17 and 1800s was probably teaching the same thing look around you see all the the, the uh sin and all the sin and that's back in 17 and 1800s and that jesus has got to be coming soon well he hadn't come yet but listen he's a whole lot closer now than he was then because he's coming and i look forward to it i look forward Amen. to seeing him and uh i i believe this morning that and we should we should fix our minds on this thing and understand that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that He was resurrected from the dead and that He arose and He did all of this and if, if it hadn't have happened, you and I couldn't have been saved. Right. Now, and listen, it's it, He had to do all of it. And people, He did it all and now He's sitting there on the right hand of the Father and He's making intercessions for us and we, we, should, we should concentrate on this and like we saying here we should do some soul searching every day that we live upon this earth we should thank the lord god for our life and we should say lord if there's anything in my life that is not pleasing to you please show it to me through the holy spirit that i might correct it or that you would help me correct it because that's what the, the lord jesus christ and what god likes to what they want to hear and, then, and to know that you're you're living for them and that you're wanting to, to serve them so this is what peter i mean uh, paul was talking to him about for he said i delivered unto you first of all that which i also received and when did paul when did uh, uh, paul receive this on the road to damascus and 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 jesus spoke to him and told him these things and he said uh he told ananias he said hey he's he's my he's my man and he's going to go to the to the gentiles for me so paul knows what he's talking about and also he was the one that heard all of the other old apostles talking and and preaching about this and so he says uh he delivered it and first of all that which also received how that christ died for our sins according to the scriptures Amen. and not only uh, one place in the scriptures, but many, many in the Old Testament, New Testament, the prophets prophesied about Him coming and dying for our sins. In the New Testament, we they, we had those that are eyewitnesses to it. They foretold it, and Jesus Christ did that very thing. He come and He died on the cross of Calvary for our sins. And we take it so lightly sometimes, right. and we just think, well, Jesus died on the on the cross of Calvary for me. But listen, people, it was a whole lot. It was a whole lot more than that. He he won the victory. Amen. He 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 defeated the devil. He completely defeated him, and he let the devil have his own way with things, and he let him have his way when he died on the cross of Calvary. Because had if he, if he hadn't. Have, he, he could have he could have called ten thousand the Bible says ten thousand leaves of angels and come there and supported him and the devil would have no 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 power at all but he he permitted that to happen so that you and I could be saved and listen we so many times we don't appreciate what the Lord did for us and I'm not I'm not throwing any no, anything at anybody because listen I know by myself I forget so many times to give him thanks to praise his name and to try to to do the best i can and i'll say well you know i'll have some kind of excuse a lot of times say well uh maybe tomorrow mm -hmm. but listen it's not right right it's not right people he's my he's my he's my savior and it wasn't for him listen i'll be i would wind up in a devil's hell mm -hmm. and listen i would be i would be there and and you know uh people says about the far but listen I would be there without the love of God. Mm -hmm. People, if we if we didn't have the love of God, uh, it it would be such a dark and gloomy and.
place to, to, to live. No, we, it wouldn't be worth living. So these are some of the things that I want you to see here. Now in verse 5, notice here what he said in ver, uh, verse 4, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the Scripture. And then number, number 5, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of about above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greatest part remain until this present, but some are falling asleep. Now, he's giving good scriptures, he's giving good evidence that Jesus Christ was seen after the resurrection. And uh, we, we have two, two uh, different sects of people in the Bible, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And the Sadducee says, no, there is no resurrection. When you live, you live, and when you die, you die, and that's all of it. And I don't understand how that they went through and tried to keep the law and why, what their purpose was, but they were strict in the law, and they did this and they did that, but yet they said there's no resurrection. And so uh, there is people in this world today, believe it or not, that don't believe that there ever was a Jesus Christ. There is people in this world that don't believe that he died and rose and that there will be anything after death but that you just go to the ground and you rot and that's all of it and there's nothing else left. But listen, we that know the Lord Jesus Christ, we that understand why he did what he did for us, know one day that we're going to come forth out of that grave. Amen. This old body is going to come out of it as a glorified body. And our spirit has already went to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And they're going to unite and be one, one body again. And they're going to be there with the Lord Jesus Christ throughout eternity. And so uh, we, we understand this. But there's so many people that don't understand that. And I'm reason, you know, you say, well, why do you say this? Well, listen, you don't know how many people today that's watching us. You don't know how many people that's listening to this. Listen, people, we got we got we got a machine now that's sending this thing all all over the all over the world. Amen. And 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 some little feller out there or some old man or somebody may hear this and it may open up open their eyes, their ears, and they might be saved from this. So you you know, it's not it's just not only for you, but it's for everyone that hears it. And like I say, the Lord has blessed us and let us be able to transfer these messages out into the world and uh, you know there's people out there that will still listen there's people out there that's never heard the name Jesus Christ right and uh, they'll open up their ears when they hear these things so anyway that's that's it's you know it's it's necessary that this thing keep being repeated and repeated and repeated that the world will hear it and 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 God has made it uh, uh, where that we can do this and not not by traveling to places but listen we can send the message over the air and that that's that's a sign of his coming when when when, when we can when the world when the world hears it when the world hears it he'll be back Amen. So here again we see in verse 6 <clears throat> after that he, well, I'm gonna say, verse 7 after that he was seen of James then of all the apostles and last of all, he was seen of me also as a one born of due time, out of due time. And so that's the one that I was talking about on the Damascus Road for the Paul, uh, for that the Lord spoke to Paul and, uh, and uh, where he was saved. In verse 9, for I am the least of the apostles that am not meant to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. And so Paul recognizes his sinful life. Paul was a was a was a sinful man until the Lord spoke to his heart. And he was on his way at that time to persecute the church and to tell uh, to to chain up people and carry them before the law and have them put in jail. But uh, thank the Lord that he uh, he stopped Paul on the way and he spoke to Paul. And Paul from that time on was a different man altogether. But in verse 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labor more abundantly than they all, yet not I, 
but the grace of God which was with me. And you know, Amen. that's something this morning that we ought to all be able to say uh, and, and mean it. But he says, by the grace of God, I am what I am. We should understand what, why we're what we are because of the grace of God. And listen, death and hell cannot touch us because of the grace of God. And that's, we are what we are by the grace of God. Amen. We're a saved individual or a saved spirit a saved soul and we have this outer body here to uh, to conduct us around but listen like i said well, it's not saved but one day it'll be changed and it'll be a glorified body so here he says therefore in verse 11 therefore whether it were i or they so we preach and so ye believe now, if Christ be preached that he arose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? And so, in that time, in that time, Paul's, Paul ran into these uh, Sadducees, and uh, no, no doubt they withstood him and, and said that, hey, there's no resurrection. But we, it's not, it's not, it's still the same today as it was then because you have so many, uh, even they will brag on themselves saying that they're atheists. And of course they don't believe that there's a God. They don't believe in uh, Jesus Christ. They don't believe in anything. And uh, they just believe that they're going to die. They know they're going to die, but that's it. And the only reason they believe they're going to die is because they've seen people do it. So here again, therefore, whether uh, in verse 12, now if Christ be preached, that he rose from the dead. How say some among you that there is no resurrection of that? But in verse 13, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And uh, so if we, we know this morning that Christ did arise because Paul has given us uh, uh, examples of some of those that saw him. And he said in one place it was as many as 500 uh, saw him at one time. So, so he has risen. Uh, and, and we know this morning that what Paul wrote, what Paul is writing down here is inspired by the Holy Spirit and by God, and it's true. Amen. And now, you, you, you have people that will say, no, there's no resurrection. But here's the thing. You'll have people also to say that God's Word is not true. Well, people, listen, all I can say to you this morning is that you have, you're have you going to have to trust God to show you uh, what's true and what's not true. And and there's so many people out there that will tell you that this, this word is not true. So now, here in verse uh, 15, Yeah, and if... And we are bound, we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised, he, he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. And so Paul is saying, hey, we're telling you a lie if we say that, if, if it's true that, that Christ has not been raised, because we, we're, that's what we're telling you. And so he says here, for if the dead rise not, then is, is not Christ raised? And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. And so right. he's trying to tell them this morning, hey, if I'm telling you that Christ is, is, is not a lie and that Christ didn't, wasn't resurrected, then you're dead in your sins. Right. And, 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 and that's something that we need to think about this morning. Uh, if, if we're if we're actually uh, believing this, or if we're not believing this, and if there, if there's doubts in your mind about the resurrection and about death, uh, Christ's death, then you need to do some soul searching and find out uh, the truth about the matter. So Amen. here, then they uh, in verse uh, 18, then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. And so he, he's trying to explain to them, listen, all the people that die are not perished. There, there are some that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're with the Lord in heaven. In, in verse 19, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Right. In, this, in this, if we have, now notice, if in this life only, we have hope in Christ. In this 
this fleshly, fleshly body that we have and in this life, we have a hope in Christ. Listen, he says here, we are of all men most miserable, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Amen. And so we, we understand here again that Jesus Christ was resurrected, that he ascended to the Father, and he's sitting on the, on the throne beside the Father, and he's, he's there for our purpose. And for, in, in verse 22, for as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. And this making, in this life here that he's saying Christ, for, in, for as in Adam all died, fleshly, even so in Christ shall all be made alive spiritually. Amen. And so we will be, a, we will be a made alive through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. But every man in his own order, Christ, the first fruit, after they that are Christ at his coming, then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and all power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. And so he's telling us here that he will be reigning and his last enemy in verse 26, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And so that when he comes back and when we all this is settled, there'll be no more death because all, all the death that will be, will be in hell. That's what, that's what hell is going to be full of is death. And all that are alive and, and are Christians will be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he says he's going to put, he's going to put death, uh, uh, destroy death. And the way that he's going to destroy it is he's going to throw the devil and all of, of, the, the, of hell into the lake of fire. And there's where they're going to be eternally. Right. There's never going to be anything, any way that any of them can escape. And they'll be there through... Well, I can't say through eternity, but they'll be there eternally uh, uh, in misery and, and wanting to escape. And, and I think that the, sort of the memory that they will have of the opportunity that they had when they heard people uh, trying to read the scripture and say something to, to uh, uh, tell them that they were wrong or that they needed to uh, uh, search out their soul salvation. I believe that that will go rain through their their minds throughout eternity uh, in eternity, and they'll be there that, in that suffering. Right. And uh, listen, there's there won't be any any escape. It's it's all it's all over with for them. There's nothing there. But we that understand the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that we have accepted Him as our Savior will be with him in eternal bliss in heaven and we'll be there eternally and we'll be praising the Lord and we'll be happy and we'll have no doubts, we'll have no worries about anything ending, we'll have no uh, uh, thoughts about, oh, if I had done this or if I'd done that like those that are in hell or in the lake of fire. So here he says, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Amen. For he hath put all things under his feet. In verse 27. But when he saith all things are put under his under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. So he uh, he's going he, he, it, he is manifest. And when in verse 28, when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him that God may be all in all. What he's saying is this morning is that Jesus Christ, when all is done, when all is when all is taken care of, then he says, the Son also himself be subject unto God. And and uh, unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. God will be all in all. God will, God will be God, 
and Jesus Christ will give him honor and glory and the Holy Spirit will give him honor and glory and all will be under God. So this, this morning, this is what this is what we see here that will take place in heaven. And we will be there in the presence of God. And we will be able to give him honor and glory throughout our eternity. And he says here then. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him, that he may put all things under him. That's us. We will all be there and praise him. For in verse 29, else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all, which are are they then baptized for the dead? And this 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 scripture here, these people that don't believe. That that uh, that Jesus Christ uh, uh, was resurrected and all this. Why would they be going around and they would be baptized? And all this. I think that's what uh, I understand it to say. And then in verse thirty, and why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. And Paul is saying this is his condition because of the love of Christ, because he is trying to serve him. And he says, and if, if, if after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived. Evil communications, corruption, good manner. Awake to righteousness and sin not. Amen. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. And so we see here that Paul is understanding here that a lot of them that he was talking to did not have the understanding. And uh, there's many more now that, that, than it was then because the population has grown so that does not have the understanding of Jesus Christ of God. And they uh, are, are deceived. He says here, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. Now, we see this morning then that all of these things, and, and our time is about up, but all these things that I've read here this morning, we do take, we take close account of and remember and try to serve the Lord in, in a way that would be pleasing to Him and and uh, check out ourselves each day because uh, uh, we need to, we need to stay more in tune to God and what we do. And the finer tuned you are to God, the better off you are, and the closer you can live to Him, and the happier you'll be. And you know, there's nothing that could make anybody any more happy than to know that God is your Father, Amen. that Jesus Christ is your Savior, and that. When you day, lay down and they put you in that ground, that your soul is already gone to be with the Lord. There's nothing to be any better. But you think about the one that did not know the Lord. He's gone to hell. He's there. Just as soon as his breath leaves his body, he's gone. And then after that, he's going to be resurrected out of, the, out of hell. He's going to be brought out of hell. He's going to be judged. And he's going to be cast into the lake of fire. And that's his eternal home. Right. And uh, there's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing exciting about that. I don't think. There's nothing that uh, we should uh, do in order to uh, continue staying in that way. We need to. We need to try to. If if you're not if you're not saved, we need you need to try to uh, uh, find out what you need to do to to uh, change homes. Yes, yeah, that's, that's the only thing I can say this morning is to change home because listen, uh, you don't want to go there. You just don't want to go there, and uh, that's what the devil's desire is this morning is to to deceive you, and right? To tell you everything that he can to get you sidetracked. I, I'm not saying that you're if you've got salvation that you're going to lose it by saying, but listen, if you're not saved, the devil's desire is to keep you hoodwinked, and even to keep you thinking that you're saved. That you uh, you just go right along with it, and one day you'll you'll die, and you die lost, and uh, that's that's a serious thing. I mean, it, well, serious ain't even the word for it. It's 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 horrible. It's it's awful. And you know, man was man man just was he was made to serve the Lord. Amen. 
So uh, this is this is a, the lesson that uh, uh, the Lord let me uh, study a little bit this morning, and I I hope that something which has been said uh, here and to everyone is it's going out to that will listen to it. I hope it's, and I pray that the Lord will use it. And I know He will because of the, He says His word will not return to Him void. So it's going to be used. I read His word, not what I said, not my opinion, but I read His word, and His word is true. And it's going out, and it'll, it'll, it'll find a place of logic. So I thank you this morning for listening. And uh, we are glad to have our ministers with us this morning. Just glad to have you. Thank you all for coming. And Thank you all for listening.